Hello there, you beautiful people. My name is Willow, and welcome back to Supreme Commander Forged Alliance Forever for a 1v1 played on the ladder and on the Naroxis map generator. Let's go ahead and get into player introductions, starting in the north with the red player and ending in the south with the blue player. We're gonna go ahead and introduce the beautiful Red Aeon going first land as the best faction. His name is is McCuddles. And then we can move on to the very, very ugly blue player going Seraphim. First land, his name of course is the entire population of DK, which somebody told me that stands for Denmark, but I'm still gonna go with Donkey Kong, so yeah, he's just a bunch of monkeys. And right now, we can take a look at the map. We have some very, very beautiful action on the map gen today. I love this map. Looks very nice, very pleasing. And of course, it has around 7,500 reclaim. And it is, of course, going to have a few different variations in how these players have to approach it. We have two plateaus very close to the starting bases, which could be claimed by the enemy player for some cheeky kind of tactical missile launchers or a artillery piece to fire into the main base. Or even if you're really, I guess, I, I guess if you're really spicy, you could build a T2PD right here and kill off a couple of mechs. And of course, we also have this middle area where we're gonna see the majority of the fighting. There's these two choke points at the beginning, at the front of each base that lead open to this relatively small but very open field. And we're probably gonna see huge land battles erupt, maybe some fire bases. So get ready for a action packed game. As right now, we have our first units coming out from each side, a couple of Solens for intel, and maybe if you're lucky, you can kill an engineer after firing for 40 seconds. And of course, we have the Aurora and Spirit combo coming out from McCuddles. So, let's go ahead and talk about something very important. There's a couple of buttons down below that you may or may not have pressed. If you look below and you see a red button that says subscribe, if you click it, it turns gray and you instantly become much more beautiful. I guarantee it. Just... Go in. It's it's like that trick. You're you can you you can go to any mirror in the world is a magic mirror. If you go to a mirror and look at it in pitch blackness, you will see the most beautiful version of yourself imaginable. <laughs> Only works in pitch black though. <laughs> I don't I don't know where that came from. This is a train wreck of a start, but. Of course, we're going to have to see how these players get on. We do, of course, have a decent amount of reclaim here in the middle, particularly these 150 mass rocks, as well as a couple of 75 mass rocks that have been strewn about, about, uh, strewn about as well as some good reclaim in the back of these bases. So these players are going to be able to get up to T2 economy relatively early, or maybe even T2 units, or might even opt for a very heavy T1 phase. It's going to have to be very interesting to see what they go for. The Selen does manage to pick up an Engineer and maybe even will pick up a Building Max. So very good play coming out from the entire population of DK, getting a little bit of denial on very early expansion efforts. Not going to be too impactful. It is always bad to lose stuff like that, but, but it's so close to his base. He won't have too much trouble gaining that back. A mobile AA trying to deal with this Bomber, which picks up two Engineer kills right off the bat. If another engineer kill and it will be at its rank of veterancy and there's two more engineers kind of sitting very close to each other would be surprised if that's not the target and it does seem as though that is the target there and going to be able to pick it up but gonna die for its efforts and that's the end of that aeon bomber decent little bits of harass coming out from both sides as entire pop of DK has now hold fired and set this Selin to be invisible. So this cloak Selin going to be unassailable until some radar shows up. Unfortunately for it, there is radar right here. Uh, I believe. Oh, wait, is, is it cloak and stealth? Da -da 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 personal radar and cloaking. Wow. Okay. So you need Omni to see that. That is very interesting. 
Gonna have to see if that results in anything. I, I always thought it was just cloak for some reason. Maybe... Maybe I'm confusing it with the mole, which I think only has radar and no cloak, which is probably what is happening here. It's very strange. I've always found it strange that cloak exists in the FA universe, and very few units really get access to it. Like the Selin, the Cybern ACU. Anything else get cloak? I don't think so. And... Even if it does, it's just not used... To oh, a fire beetle. Fire beetle, of course, gets cloak. But fire beetle doesn't get radar. Does it? Yeah, you can see a fire beetle on radar, I'm pretty sure. But, enough talking about Cybrans. We have an Aeon and a Seraphim here today. And we have a decent amount of expansion going on. It's been a relatively quiet early game. There has been some harassment. That Selin somehow died. I guess that was probably an attack move with an Engineer. I believe attack move with engineer can still kill a Selin. And we have a few units over here posturing. Does seem as though this is going to be a bad trade for McCuddles. Doesn't have any intel with this. So these Aurora going to be picked off by this roaming band of Thoms. Is going to be able to trade out some of these Aurora for Thoms. But unfortunately very bad trade there for McCuddles. And over here to the north, a Thumb going to be able to get into the back line over here. Maybe not going to get too much done, as there are some Auroras that can come chase that down relatively easily. But that Thumb is going to get some damage. Uh, McCuddles, if you are watching, because I'm pretty sure I've seen your name before, uh, your little bit, a little bit of advice. You're not mixing in nearly enough spirits. Um, generally, what you want to see, which of the, wow, okay, um, I, it's, it's so wonky with this new thing. Yeah, uh, you have too many Aurora to Spirit combo. A lot of high-level players like to go as little as three Aurora to a Spirit, because Spirits take almost no time to build. Um, I like four Aurora to a Spirit, but that is all kind of down to personal preference. But ten to a Spirit means that you're going to run into situations like this, where you have multiple little groups of Aurora that are just sort of sitting around without any intel, so they are basically... They're half as useful because they only get half their range, really. So you want to make sure you have a lot of spirits. It feels bad because the other uh, other factions don't have to build as many scouts. But your scout is relatively good and it isn't going to necessarily hurt you too much. It's just a little bit of mass and some time. But overall, McCuddle's doing very well for themselves as they've managed to grab a decent bit of map control here, managing to grab the majority of the middle of the map. And currently the entire pop of Donkey Kong showing up. He's going to throw some bananas at these Auroras. Uh, and those bananas are going to very quickly kill the Aurora because unfortunately not much health. A stiff breeze sometimes is all it takes to kill Auroras. And right now... These mechs is not really under threat. Sure, maybe one or two of them could possibly die, but there's just enough in this area to stop this run-by. But on the other side, there's a run-by that's much more promising coming out from McCuddles, who's going to be able to get over here, kill off all three of these mechs is almost guaranteed, and that's going to be very good for him. Let's go ahead and look at reclaim numbers. 2.6 thousand versus 1.4 thousand. So McCuddles behind on reclaim, but overall mass generation McCuddles ahead by nearly 20 mass a second, which is going to feel really good here moving in towards the mid game. Would be surprised if we... Whoa, what the... Get out of here, box! Okay, I, I kicked a box with my foot. Didn't know it was underneath my desk, but it's gone now. Uh, McCuddle's already getting up some T2 mechs, and I would be surprised if we don't see a early transition into T2 land. Yeah, it looks like we're going to have a sub-10 minute T2 land here. Really nice to get out either a Blaze Asylum Force or an Obsidian Heavy Force. Those are two very, very valid strategies. Going to have to see which one McCuddles opts for. I would argue that the Blaze Asylum is a little bit harder on the micro aspect, but is very mobile and very, very good for, in general, just taking very good trades. Asylums are amazing. But the Obsidian is slower. You still get very good trades at T2, but it's you just get very few of them, and they're very slow, so you have to be very heads up with your movement and keeping units out on the field and spreading them out a little bit. Speed and range now on the way for DK. Meanwhile, McCuddle's not going for any upgrades on the commander just yet. E2 Engineer is now starting to pop out of that factory for McCuddles. 
And overall reclaim numbers now starting to reach a little bit closer to parity. 2.3 thousand versus 3.5 thousand. And both players have managed to reverse the early game without taking too much damage. A few idle Aurora down here, not really going for that third max. Not too critical, but you want to make sure you're doing that. This mech needs to re be rebuilt by McCuddles. Range now on the way for McCuddles. He's paused the ACU and is using one Engineer. That is a very interesting little strategy there. So if you use one Engineer, it has five build power. The ACU has 10. I think he's trying to avoid a power stall, but he's in a power stall anyways. If you're trying to avoid a power stall at all costs, just wait until your T2 power is done before getting the upgrade personally is what I would do. And currently this force out over here for the entire Papa DK getting massively outnumbered and killed without any trade. Very little nice trade there for Cuddles. It's not even a trade, just win. And a T1 bomber now out on the field. One rank of veterancy, six kills. Most of those I'm assuming are on Thoms. McCuddles being very heads up with the air forces, but the entire Papa DK doing well for himself unfortunately though not really scaling his economy as well as the opposition he has got t2 land on out onto the field he's got ilshiva's producing he's building a t2 power generator and another air factory but a very calm early game as this these sides start to reach a little bit of uh map control parity neither side too dominant overall across the map McCuddle's range has finished up. Speed now on the way. Gonna assist with all of these engineers. That's probably a power stall. It will be a power stall in a few seconds, but his mass stall is really helping him out here. And once that power stall starts, I think that he'll be out of the... Maybe out of the mass stall? No. He manages to get something else up. Maybe he pauses a factory? Or just finishes up a few more power generators? And speed and range has finished up now for... Oh, wait, no, it hasn't. It's about to finish up for the entire pop of DK. And that'll be pretty much even. Both comms will have their speed and range upgrades. The Aeon comm, a little bit better with those upgrades, has just a little bit more range, which can be abused. But the Seraphim comm, no slouch, does have more HP overall. And is going to be able to get in and start killing off these Auroras very quickly. We have Obsidian's. That is what McCuddles has opted for. Obsidians will do very well into the Ilshivas. Ilshivas will trade a little bit more mass efficiently, but the Obsidian is just a very strong backbone for your force. And once you start getting up larger numbers, say about 20 or 30 of them, it's an incredibly scary force and will be something for the entire pop of DK to fear. As these Ilshivas over here on the west starting to clear out some of these Auroras, this mass amount of Auroras out on the field for McCuddles, really doing him some favors, but losing a whole bunch to a T1 bomber there, not very good. The Auroras really giving him a lot of meat to this attack as he tries to push back against the entire Papa DK. He wants to push him off these four mexes out here right outside his, the front of his base, and if he's able to do that, it will be very dangerous for DK to deal with. But I think DK may have enough to hold out here as the Cuddles runs out of a lot of his units here, and he's very thin on units in them at the moment. Might want to start thinking about transitioning fully out of that T1 unit production phase here soon, as he's not going to get too much more value out of these Auroras in the coming minutes. And the entire pop of DK walking forward, a little bit of a scary position, as, of course, there's a lot more enemy units in the area but does have some reinforcements back here to use at his leisure. And is slowly picking off unit after unit, up to two ranks of veterancy already, overcharge being incredibly useful. Unfortunately though, against Obsidians, the overcharge not quite so uh, amazing as it doesn't one-shot them as you would hope, at least with one E-Storage. Two E-Storage, you one-shot Obsidians. And McCuddles currently falling back, throwing shots into Ilshvas, throwing shots into that commander. And going to be able to pick off a few more units. He is still trying to be aggressive, really just wants to push entire pop of DK off of this position. 
maybe overcommitting a little bit as he's started to get really thin on land forces. He had a huge land unit advantage, but now it's closer to parity, but I would say he has a lot more production as he's sitting on a much better economy. Uh, also, this is a little bit overkill with the TMD. Fun fact, you don't need one TMD per each mass extractor. You can definitely find ways to protect it a little bit better. But I guess safer than sorry is the reasoning there. No TMD for the power generators, though, is interesting. And neither side taking a decisive advantage at the moment. Sure, McCuddles definitely has more map control and does have more income, but DK upgrading his economy rapidly to catch up, now only a few mass per second behind. Let's go ahead and check on that reclaim. DK doing very well, and he also has a huge reclaim field right outside his base. If he can manage to protect himself, he's getting out some engineers to reclaim it as we speak. McCuddle's kind of running out of reclaim on his side of the map, so that is something to keep in mind. If you keep on attacking positions and don't get a win, you start dropping a lot of mass over to your opponent. Oh, also, want to wanna praise these players. They both said GLHF. Be, be kind. Just say it. As T2 started up for DK... He's decided he wants to maybe get out some T2PD, make sure he can hold on to this mass extractor expansion. And we're back to a kind of quiet game. We have some poking and prodding from a couple of obsidians out from McCuddles, but not quite going to be able to get too much out of that. Let's go ahead and check on some numbers here. Overall mass in land forces, 5,800 for Cuddles versus DK sitting on 4,500. Relatively close. Could go either way depending on the usage of these commanders. The commanders, speaking of them, one at two ranks of veterancy, whereas DK over at three. So DK getting a little bit more value out of those gun speed and range upgrades. Now with T2 on the commander, we'll also be able to throw together a few T2 PD to try and stop these large obsidian forces that are now appearing from being too scary. But Obsidian's going to try and make their way into the base using this cliff face over here. We've seen Cuddles try and attack this position a few times before. Hasn't really gotten anything out of it. And there's just a lot of units in the area that could stop this. Nano Repair now on the way for DK. He wants to get that calm beefy. He wants to be able to use it as a sledgehammer to try and batter his way out of this wall that's been thrown up by the units of Cuddles. And Cuddles is going to run in. This is going to be a sacrifice of all these units. They're not going to make it out, but he's trying to get some damage done. Unfortunately for Cuddles, looking a lot more and more like a mass donation than a true run by attack. Does manage to get a few out onto the field of transport being used to ferry some units out of those factories. And the Blaze over here, along as well as these Obsidians, is going to try and focus down one of these T2 mechs before they go down. Not a good trade coming out from McCuddles. Kills off one T2 mechs for a 3,000 reclaim field on the ground there. We also have a tactical missile launcher built up now for McCuddles. Is yet to fire. And may have certain goals with that. I wonder where it can hit. It can hit most of the base. There is a TMD here, but there is some T there is some mexes and maybe even a power generator or two that would be worth sniping off. No, you can't get that one. And as the first missile fires out of that tactical launcher, I have to see how it goes. He did see that TMD, so maybe he will notice it and whoa, Steam just opened out of nowhere. What the hell? Why did Steam open? And why did it tab me out of the game? Okay. Well, that was wonky. As McCuddles gets one T2 Max, is he going to be able to get more? Another one about to go down. TMD not quite able to get a kill. He's going to have to build a new one to protect this, but two T2 Max is going to be able to get a lot of value out of that. 
and 2,700 mass killed. That mass, that missile launcher has definitely paid for itself and really knocked down DK. 36 mass a second versus 72, and T3 land now coming out onto the field for Cuddles. T3 on the way for DK, but you just can't afford it as Harbingers start to bear down on the front lines. DK does, of course, have that commander. He's invested in nano repair. He's invested in speed and range. He's invested, of course, into that commander heavily, and it now needs to pay off. He needs to be able to use it to kill off these Harbingers, and he needs to get himself some breathing room as the Harbingers come in, and the fight continues. The calm of McCuddle showing up to try and help. But Nano Repair is a very beefy and strong upgrade. DK down to half HP as he's fighting off the Harbingers. He's going to be able to kill off one of these Harbingers very soon. That will help him maybe give him a rank of veterancy. And that could be pivotal. 8,000 out of 10,000, only a few Harbingers. That's four Harbingers he has to kill. But with a sniper bot on the field, it can fire into that commander. McCuddles could also push here. I think McCuddles might just have the win here if he pushes very hard with the with the ACU and those sniper bots that are now coming out of the factory. Entire pop of DK going to struggle to deal with the pressure being exerted by McCuddles. With the sniper boss on the field, the key is to use them efficiently. And he's doing very well so far using attack move. If you just use attack move, they will slowly push forward and kill off everything. But a drop of Ilshivas in the back line kills off a few mechs here. Unfortunately, only one of them was T2. These drops could get very dangerous. Cuddles needs to make sure he's on top of it. As the sniper bots start to fire into that commander, that commander about to reach another rank of veterancy, which will help him out a lot. Oh, not quite able to get that harbinger that would have given him the rank of veterancy. I think even killing an obsidian at this point could. But the drop coming out from DK, signs of life here. If he can get some economic damage done, bring McCuddles back down. Could be very good. McCuddles has lost quite a bit of economy in the past couple of minutes. But he is still ahead. Overall reclaim numbers, 17,000 for DK, 10,000 for Cuddles. There's 13,000 on the map for these players to scoop up. We're starting to get to that critical mass of sniper bots that you really fear seeing. Entire pop of DK does have nano, which means he'll be able to get back into the fight with that ACU quickly, but five, six, seven sniper bots is even too much for those nano comms to handle. But T1 Bomber's coming out and beautifully countering the sniper bots. He's used them quite well, and this air advantage really gonna start paying off for DK with the drops and the bombers. Gonna need asylums to protect the sniper bots. And a sniper bot stack has slowly been dealt with. But they are still building up, and that is still a problem that DK has to deal with. You can only rely on no flak and no asylums for so long. T1 bombers are not going to be the end all be all here. And with T1 Bombers continuing to drop their payloads, and DK continuing to hold out here in the middle, it's looking like he may be able to stabilize. He's up to T3 land himself, getting his own sniper bots. What better to counter a sniper bot than another sniper bot? But he's definitely behind in this game. He does have a decent little Ilshiva force out over here to the east. Could see another drop up onto this plateau. Get those three mexes again, which are rebuilt at T2, which could be a big blow towards Cuddles. And the reclaim should start rolling in heavily for DK at 21,000 reclaim now. 
He's managing to get all of the reclaim from these big fights in the middle, but he's slowly running out. Something to keep our eye on. Because once that reclaim runs out, once there's no more reclaim coming into either of these players' coffers, it's just down to that mass generated and who is taking better fights. And it would seem that McCuddles wants to shut down this upper plateau and maybe even build his own sort of weapons up there. Six tactical missiles built up now by this serpentine TML. Sniper bots trying to take pot shots at the commander, getting a few through. This Ilshiva force over to the east has been cleaned up. And the sniper bot's just sitting in the middle, exerting control. DK has to wait until he has his about the same amount of sniper bots, but he's also trying to outproduce McCuddles on that front. Up to six sniper bots now. Those sprite strikers, very dangerous. And an attack down here to the southeast going to result in this base most likely just going down. T1 PD is not going to stop a couple of Harbingers, but the T1 Air here might be a big threat. The Harbingers want to get in. It's only T1 Mexes, but every little bit counts here as DK is struggling to keep up economically. Even killing off a transport with the Harbingers. DK has been pushed into a corner. And Cuddles is looking like he's going to make a bit of a by-the-book play, just slowly building up his land force, using that economic advantage. It's only four mass a second, but that still matters. And of course, he's al almost the entire game just had a unit advantage, up to 18,000 mass in units versus 8,000 over double the land force. These T1 bombers are going to be significant, but they're getting shot down slowly. And the sniper bots out onto the field slowly but surely pushing forward. They have asylums. They have flak. Only one sniper bot really outside of the cover of a shield. And also has some harbingers on the field to try and run interference from any attempted rushes coming out from DK. And he's just slowly choking the Blue Seraphim player out of this game at the moment. Taking incremental leads and building upon them. As he's fallen back with the commander, doesn't want to risk a snipe. Might want to think about getting a little bit heavier into the airplay though, as his opponent has shown a propensity for building those air, air units. And sniper bots on both sides getting decent shots off. But both saying outside the range of the enemy's sniper bots for now. And the entire Papa BK has just been sitting here tanking, tanking shots from sniper bots for a while, not really caring, but now he's down into yellow HP and decides to fall back a little bit. These Sprite Strikers, all of them getting a decent amount of value. Some of them getting up to a rank of veterancy or two. And he's just containing DK in his main base. DK slowly trying to build up enough of a force to push this back. But Cuddle's constantly throwing more units on the field. Does pull... The Sprite Strikers out of the range of the Asylums for a moment, but then pulls the Asylums right back forward. I don't think this is a good trade. That T2 Stationary Shield Generator is going to be very powerful here. Sniper Bots need to return fire, but does he not have intel? He does have intel. The Sniper Bots not really firing back very well at the moment. Arpenters out onto the field. Trying to get any kind of dissuasion against a land force pushing forward. Those T1 bombers come out and the Sprite Striker count knocked down to four after that. 
Would love to see some of these Harbingers just given an attack move. There's a decent bit of reclaim to be scooped up here. Although they would probably die for it, as the enemy sniper bots are on the field, of course. E2 now on the way for McCuddles. And we're going to speed it up a little bit as these players are seemingly happy to play Sniper Wars. And we... Yeah, we're, we're speeding it up. They're just playing Sniper Wars. There's not really much to talk about. How's your day going? Let me know in the comments and uh, tell me what you think about this game and these players and how they're playing it. I really like the style coming out from McCuddles. He's, he's playing very safe, admittedly, but he is also just taking incremental advantages. I also like the way DK is just kind of being a stalwart defender here. He's managing to keep up economically and even surpass McCuddles now. And, of course, I do love to see the sniper play. I like sniper bots. They're very fun to use. They're fun, fun to see. They're difficult, but rewarding. And T3 now on the way from McCuddles, and he's going for a Galactic Colossus once that T3 finishes. Interesting play. As we meander past the 32-minute mark, more sniper bots coming out on the field for DK, but... McCuddles deciding to ditch that idea for now. He wants to focus on a GC and he's also just throwing a lot of mass into Harbingers. I guess he wants a support force for that experimental once it's finished up and now he's starting to build it. And that will build relatively quickly as long as he has the mass but he doesn't really He'd need to pause some of his production to really afford this doesn't really want to might be a little bit of a misplay coming out here unless he can get some reclaim and that's exactly why dk is pushing forward and trying to be aggressive with his lance force he wants more reclaim speaking of which 31,000 versus 20,000 ish 30 versus 20,000 10,000 mass reclaim generation advantage which is significant at this point in the game As DK pushes forward, he has those T3 mobile shields, the Athanahas, or Athanas, which are really going to soak a lot of damage. And with this big fight coming out, Zooey is going to get some value, but that's just a lot of Harbingers, and he walked the sniper bots. Oh no, he didn't. The sniper bots still sitting in the back. This fight is heavily dictated by whether or not the, the Harbingers are going to be able to get on top of the sniper bots. The sniper bots going to start falling back now. But the Harbinger count is slowly getting whittled away by these Sniper Bots. And the Harbinger count probably just going to collapse here. He can't really afford to fall back. You have to keep moving forward. Because when you fall back, you kind of just admit defeat. And the Sniper Bot's going to take pot shots as you leave. Going to leave this battle with only five to six Harbingers remaining. And that's a bit of a blow to Cuddles. But he does manage to force... The attack off and is going to use the Harbingers in a reclaiming action. Going to be able to scoop up quite a little bit and all of that's going to be thrown directly into a GC. That reclaim going to be very pivotal. If he can reclaim for just a minute or two, it'll be incredibly useful for him. He is very light on, on T1 Engineers generally want to see a bunch of t1 engineers out on the field or a forward factory building them this tactical missile launcher has fired all those missiles again and managed to get nothing for it and the t1 bombers out in the field really causing issues for cuddles and it seems as though dk with this air advantage he's just gonna wipe cuddles off of the map he doesn't have any real land forces and we saw earlier a 10,000 mass advantage in land forces if you don't count the GC, he's up to, I think the GC is 27,000, so he's like 5,000 mass in land units versus 42,000. That's, there's a chicken. There's a chicken building. But still, massive advantage now for DK. He can push this 
quite easily. All of the mass for Cuddles is going into this GC. This is an all-in play. He went for it a little bit early, and I didn't even notice it, but a drop over here, or maybe even just a run by out from DK, killing off these three mass extractors up on the plateau. And Cuddles has been, been taking some very bad trades here. And as the sniper bots and as those thumbs start to push forward, the GC is going to finish. But will it be enough? Will he be able to get victory with this GC? Because if he can't, it's going to be very difficult for him to come back. He doesn't have the firebase. He doesn't have the resources that DK had to defend against such a large land attack. The GC finishes up and that's kind of going to just be what this game hinges on. There's a bunch of T1 bombers out on the field to try and help deal with that GC. He's going to try and use it defensively, it would seem. It's always fun to see a landed air unit get picked up by the, the tractor beam of the GC. There's also all these sniper bots, if they're microed well, can help deal with that GC. But they need to start dealing damage. You can't afford to just split up and run away from the GC right now. Got a kite and deal damage onto it. As Zooey is being dropped in the back for DK. He's going to be able to get a lot of damage done here. He's killing off a T2 Max. He's going to get another one. And even more, more drops coming in. More units going to be dropped off here in the back line. And Cuddles just doesn't have the... I mean, he has units, but he just doesn't have the units in position to deal with this. A lot of economy for Cuddles going to go down. Down to 75 mass, ex mass generation and falling rapidly. And these drops out from DK are going to be pivotal, but the GC is pushing forward and it's real, relatively undamaged. The sniper bots over here on the eastern side starting to get some damage done onto the GC. Down to 89,000 HP. The chicken, I don't think it'll finish in time as long as the GC just pushes forward. But it has to push through this firebase. T2PD being thrown up as quickly as possible by DK. T2PD is going to take its toll. T1 Bomber is going to be out on the field constantly throwing in damage. This GC is on a timer. It's going to be able to try and chase down maybe the commander or get in and deal some damage. If he can kill off the power grid, that could be huge. I think firing at the chicken is a bit of a mistake. Want to be firing at pretty much anything but that. But he's just walking forward. Does he have intel? What does he know? He doesn't know where the commander is. But... By luck, it seems like he's moving towards it. Did he maybe get... Maybe he got some intel earlier, but now he can see the commander. He's going to chase it down. Maybe target priority is on to ACU. It needs to be. Otherwise, it's going to fire at Mexes, and it's starting to fire. It's down to 21,000 HP. DK down to half HP. It's about to drop into the red, but there's 20,000 HP, and it's just too much. DK goes down. And I would like to thank you all for watching. You've been beautiful. Thank you all for your support. If you are a Patreon or channel member, you are so helpful and it helps out me so much. I'll see you in the next one. This is Willow, signing off. But if I lay down and I play dead